For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Mother Earth, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise for the beauty of the hour, of the day and of the night. Hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Mother Earth, to our hymn of grateful praise for the joy of human love brother sister parent child for all creatures big and small creatures tame and creatures wild mother earth to thee we raise this our hymn of Hi, I'm John Frederick Jaffrey, Town Manager. I want to welcome you to Earth Day 2020, the 50th anniversary celebration of Earth Day. I want to thank our Conservation Commission for all the work they did trying to put on an Earth Day celebration that would have been worthy of the 50th anniversary. However, the coronavirus had different ideas on how things would go, and I want to thank them for still trying to uh, hold this event in a virtual environment. So thank you for all your work. And I want to encourage everybody that despite what's going on right now, this uh, COVID-19 has got different ideas about how we can uh, do things in our lives. We can still appreciate the earth, uh, do things like rake our yard, I still have to do mine, plant a garden, still have to do that too. Hike in a park near your neighborhood and uh, you know just take your dogs for a walk and enjoy nature for what it is. But uh, So from the town of Jaffrey, I want to say Happy Earth Day, uh, number 50, to everyone, and enjoy, and have a great day. How did the idea for Earth Day come about? Earth Day founder Gaylord Nelson came up with the idea for a national day to focus on the environment after Nelson, then a U.S. Senator from Wisconsin, witnessed the ravages of a massive oil spill in Santa Barbara, California, in 1969. He was disturbed that an issue as important as our environment was not addressed in politics or by the media. So he created the first Earth Day on April 22, 1970. An estimated 20 million people nationwide attended festivities that day. Earth Day has been celebrated every April 22 since 1970. The main aim of Earth Day? is to raise awareness on the negative impact our actions as mankind have on our environment and Earth as a whole. And this is a day for political action and civic participation. To celebrate Earth Day 2020, the Jaffrey community is honored to have both a local proclamation, as presented by Frank Sterling, as well as a New Hampshire state proclamation issued by Governor Sununu. My name is Franklin Sterling. I am chairman of the Jaffe Board of Selectmen. On my lapel here are two pens from the original Earth Day uh, 50 years ago. I have to give credit to my wife Kathleen for saving them all these years. She's a uh, consummate pack rat. Anyway, <laughs> my pleasure to read this proclamation. Jaffe Proclamation for Earth Day 2020. Whereas Jaffrey is very fortunate to have an abundance of glorious natural resources and whereas residents of Jaffrey understand the value of such resources as clean air, clean water, and the natural environment that improves our quality of life and whereas one of Jaffrey's master plan principles is to promote preservation of natural and rural landscapes because the preservation of open space, forest fields, wildlife habitats, all of which are integral to our rural character is crucial importance. Mount Monadnock, our ponds, lakes, wetlands, and scenic vistas are trusts to be passed unspoiled for future generations. We will continue to work with neighboring towns and regional efforts on conservation initiatives to promote unfragmented habitat areas. And 
whereas Jaffrey's an ideal place in which to live, and as such, New Hampshire is ranked fifth nationally as such, and whereas Jaffrey is also an ideal location for businesses for employee living satisfaction, and whereas Jaffrey is positioned to lead the way and demonstrate to others the value of such resources in enhancing quality of life and developing a new generation of environmental stewards, and whereas April 22nd, 2020 is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day and is being celebrated worldwide, Jaffrey will take this opportunity to make Earth Day 2020 a landmark moment that motivates communities to become even more exceptional stewards of their local environments. Now, therefore, we, the selectmen of the town of Jaffrey, do hereby proclaim April 22nd, 2020, as Earth Day Awareness in Jaffrey, New Hampshire, and call this to the attention of all citizens. Voted in the affirmative, affirmative this 27th day of January 2020. Signed by me, Chairman of the Board, Jack Belte, and Kevin Chainman. Thank you very much for paying attention to this, and I hope you all have a happy Earth Day. Whereas New Hampshire is very fortunate to have an abundance of glorious natural resources, and whereas residents of New Hampshire understand the value of such resources as clean air, clean water, and the natural environment that improves our quality of life, and whereas New Hampshire is an ideal place in which to live, and as such is ranked fifth nationally, and whereas New Hampshire is also an ideal location for businesses for employee living satisfaction, and whereas New Hampshire is positioned to lead the way in demonstrating to others the value of such resources in enhancing quality of life and developing a new generation of environmental stewards. And whereas April 22, 2020 is the 50th anniversary of Earth Day and is being celebrated worldwide, New Hampshire will take this opportunity to make Earth Day 2020 a landmark moment that motivates communities in New Hampshire to become even more exceptional stewards of their local environments. Now, therefore I, Christopher Sununu, Governor of the State of New Hampshire, do hereby proclaim April 22, 2020 as Earth Day Awareness in the State of New Hampshire, and call this to the attention of all citizens. Hello, Jaffrey, and happy Earth Day. My name is Hutch Hutchinson. I am a den leader with Cub Scout Pack 33 right here in Jaffrey. And I want to tell you about one of the cool things that we are going to do this spring. Now, we had these great plans that uh, what we were going to do on the first weekend in May was our scouts were going to go and clean every trail on Mount Monadnock. It was going to be a great fundraiser. We were going to ask for sponsorships from organizations in town and community members. Uh, but of course, that's probably not going to happen right now. And so, uh, and, and we still want to find a way to get our mountain clean and ready and get our kids connected to their land and their, uh, their mountain. Uh, so we're still going to find a way to clean the mountain and, uh, over the month of May and have as many scouts as they're able to, to get out on those trails Monday to Friday, not on the weekend when all the, the out of towners come in, uh, but to be there and, and get our mountain clean and ready for the summer. Um, and we were planning to do it as a fundraiser. And so if you want to send a, a check of whatever amount to PAC 33 uh, to support our scouts doing that, that money all goes to, to support uh, summer camps and, and weekend adventures and, and badges and uniforms and all sorts of things that our scouts need so they can... Uh, can stay out and about in the community and enjoying where they are in Jaffrey. So you can send a check to, to uh, written out to PAC 33 and mail it to 88 Squantum Road right here in Jaffrey. Uh, send it right to me, Hutch Hutchinson, and I will make sure that our scouts get it. Um, but hey, one of the things that we always do by a campfire and in PAC meetings is we always have a song. And so one of my favorite songs that seems really appropriate uh, for both uh, Earth Day and for uh, the adventure that our Cub Scouts are doing is one you all know. You know what they say about playing a banjo. Spend half your time tuning it, the other half playing out of tune. So we're close enough. This land is your land. This land is my land. California. Bye. 
sun came a-shining And I was strolling The wheat fields waving video by Tom Smith celebrating how all of us can use our hands to fix problems in this world. Thank you, Tom. Unfortunately, the current safety protocol does not allow the scenes shown in Tom's video. However, under the leadership of Hutch Hutchinson, local scouts will be using their hands safely to make a positive difference for our community and the earth we share. I'm going to use my hand. I'll find a broken thing to bend. Gonna use my hands. Gonna use my hands. I'm gonna use my hands. I'll build a bridge and make a friend. I'm gonna use my hands. Gonna use my hands. I'm gonna make the world a Use my brain, turn every loss into a gain. Gonna use my brain, gonna use my brain. I'm gonna use my brain, and if I fail, I'll try again. I'm gonna use my brain, I'm gonna use my brain. I'm gonna make the world a my voice if something's wrong I'm making noise I'm gonna use my voice gonna use my voice gonna use my voice cause everybody has a choice I'm gonna use my voice gonna use my voice I'm gonna make the world a
we're going to use our hands. Yeah! Shakespeare was not a stranger to pandemics. Living through the plague that shut down theatres from 1607 to 1609, in A Midsummer Night's Dream, he creates a world where the seasons are turned upside down by an argument in the fairy world. Titania, the queen of the fairies, performed by Project Shakespeare student Grace Ramsden, admonishes Oberon, king of the fairies, who wishes to steal a changeling child from her. In Act 2, Scene 1 of A Midsummer Night's Dream. These are the forgeries of jealousy. And never, since the middle summer spring, met we on hill, in dale, forest, or mead, by paved fountain or by rushy brook, or in the beached margin of the sea, to dance our ringlets to the whistling wind. But with thy brawls thou hast disturbed our sport. Therefore the winds, piping to us in vain, as in revenge, have sucked up from the sea contagious fogs, which, falling in the land, have every pelting river made so proud that they have overborne their continents. The ox hath therefore stretched his yoke in vain. The plowman lost his sweat, the, and the green corn hath rotted ere his youth attained a beard. The fold stands empty in the drowned field, and the crows are fattened with the murion flock. The nine men's morris is filled up with mud, and the quaint mazes in the wanton green for lack of tread are undistinguishable. The human mortals want their winter here. No night is now with him or Carol blessed. Therefore the moon, the governess of floods, pale in her anger, washes all the air that rheumatic diseases do abound. And through this distemperature we see the seasons alter. The hoary-headed frosts, far in the fresh lap of the crimson rose, and on old Heim's thin and icy crown, an odorous chaplet of sweet summer buds is as in mockery set. The spring, the summer, the childing autumn, angry winter change their wanted liveries, and the mazed world by their increase now knows not which is which. And this same progeny of evils comes from our debate, from our dissension. We are their parents and original. Each year on April 22nd, more than a billion people celebrate Earth Day to protect the planet from things like pollution and deforestation. By taking part in activities like picking up litter and planting trees, we're making our world a happier, healthier place to live. Healthy ecosystems clean our water, purify our air, maintain our soil, regulate the climate, recycle nutrients, and provide us with food. They provide raw materials and resources for medicines and other purposes. To speak more on this, allow me to welcome our keynote speaker, Dr. Catherine Koning, Professor of Environmental Science at Franklin Pierce University. Hi, Dr. Jay. Uh, my name is Catherine Koning. Um, I'm a Professor of Environmental Science at Franklin Pierce And I'm here in the midst of our um, coronavirus mess that we all have um, to tell you that nature is still out here and it's still doing just fine. The exciting thing about this time of year, this kind of habitat is um, a really important habitat for vernal pool species. So there are things like wood frogs that lay eggs like this, and these are all lots and lots of little eggs that will develop into tadpoles, and there's, I don't know, probably uh, 40 or 50 clusters right here and more over there and each one is from a different female and you have probably heard lots of frogs. Some of the frogs that you've been hearing are um, ones like these wood frogs which laid the eggs that we just saw and of course you've all heard the peepers which are little tree frogs. The wood frogs and the peepers as well as these spotted salamanders they all live in the woods and in the spring on warm rainy nights they will crawl or hop down in into the vernal pool spotted salamanders do a mating dance the wood frogs make these mating calls and they will uh, the females will lay eggs and the males will fertilize them and then the adults 
will head back up into um, the surrounding uplands and then the vernal pool stays wet enough, long enough, so that those eggs can become tadpoles and then the tadpoles develop into adults. So the vernal pool is just one example of the really wonderful natural habitats that we have here in New Hampshire and New England and of course around the world. But all these habitats face a common threat now from something called climate change. So climate change is what it sounds like, um, a change in the um, long-term weather patterns. So patterns of precipitation, rainfall, snowfall, um, and um, all driven by um, an increase in temperature. So what causes all that? Well, what causes all that is that humans burn a lot of what's called fossil fuels. So that's gasoline in your car, oil that heats your house. Um, a lot of our electricity is produced by burning natural gas or coal, and all of those things produce carbon dioxide, which is the main greenhouse gas. But there are other greenhouse gases that are the products of agriculture or um, industry as well. Now the greenhouse effect, which is what we call it because it kind of acts like a greenhouse, like the glass in a greenhouse, um, is totally natural and without it we wouldn't have life on earth. But too much of it is a problem. So the atmosphere, these greenhouse gases, what happens is that uh, light comes through and then it warms up the surface of the earth, just like your car sitting in a parking lot with the windows rolled up on a sunny day, warms up really fast inside. The same thing happens when we have too many greenhouse gases. And so we can see that I mean, around 1880s when we've developed technology to um, burn fossil fuels, and you can see how as the carbon dioxide went, um, went up, the temperature followed right along. And um, it's gonna get worse and worse and worse if we don't um, do something about it. So if we um, get a temperature increase of one and a half degrees Celsius, which is about 2.7 degrees, almost three degrees Fahrenheit, we're gonna see some big changes. And if it goes as high as two degrees, we're gonna get even worse changes. So we're gonna lose the ice in the Arctic, um, and that is gonna be a problem for um, a species like polar bears. Um, we're gonna have species that um, have to move to cold, uh, cooler um, climates, like they move um, up a mountain where it's cooler, or they have to move to the, uh, towards the north of the South Poles. Our coral reefs are gonna decline because that carbon dioxide um, dissolves into the water and it, it um, acidifies the oceans, and that um, leads to um, a decline in coral reef. So if we get to as high as two degrees, we will lose almost all of our coral reefs. So a lot of different problems that are gonna happen um, if we get too much warming. We're all aware of the wildfires that have happened in California and Australia. That is all the result of climate change. It's just getting warmer and warmer, and those areas are very um, prone to drought, so it gets really, really dry there. And so it doesn't take much at all to get um, uh, wildfires. So some areas of the world are predicted and are already experiencing much drier, hotter conditions. Other areas may actually get somewhat wetter. The northeastern United States uh, has already seen a 67% increase in what's called extreme precipitation, so that's a heavy, long rainfalls. Um, also storms, um, hurricanes uh, get stronger when ocean um, temperatures are warmer because more water evaporates, and that makes for stronger hurricanes, and that leads to more extreme precipitation. So we don't have much time to um, address these problems. Um, the um, International Panel on Climate Change, or Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, as well as many other experts have um, identified that we need to hold temperature rise to one and a half degrees Celsius in order to preserve the environment, the sea levels, and the um, ocean temperatures and everything else that we are adapted to and that our species that are, share the earth with us are adapted to. So if we want to avoid that, then we have to try to um, keep the temperature rise um, to um, less than one and a half degrees Celsius, which doesn't sound like much, but that is a global average. 
even with that, we could still see um, as much as um, 10 additional or more days of very hot days in New England, um, you know, over 100 degrees. So a lot of people are pretty upset about this. You've probably all heard about Greta Thunberg. A lot of young people are getting involved because you know what? I think a lot of you young people want to be able to go out and do what I did today and go out into a vernal pool and find frog eggs and find frogs and see salamanders. Um, but it's not going to be ha happening if we get too much climate change. We're going to lose a lot of species if we don't take some action. We're going to lose our coral reefs. We're going to lose our polar bears, our koala bears. So when we try to think about what can be done about climate change, we want to think about something called sustainable de um, development. That means whatever changes we um, uh, come up with have to fix the environmental problems, right? Not emit too much greenhouse gases, but they can't hurt any people and they have to be affordable. So we have to think about all of these things as we figure out um, what to do. So at Franklin Pierce, we um, have an Institute for Climate Action and we're trying to um, uh, work with our neighbors and um, other organizations to try to see what we can do. And if you're interested in getting involved, please um, contact me and we'll see what we can do together. Um, but I hope you have a happy Earth Day. And I know it's not a great time right now with this um, everyone stuck at home, but we're fortunate in New Hampshire we can go out for walks and you can go out and you can enjoy nature. And there is so much cool stuff going on outside. So go on out, um, try to um, catch a frog, look for frog eggs, um, look at the birds and get out there and um, enjoy things. And thank you so much for listening. The theme for Earth Day 2020 is climate action. The enormous challenge, but also the vast opportunities of action on climate change have distinguished the issue as the most pressing topic of our time. 16-year-old Swedish environmental activist Greta Thunberg spoke at the United Nations Climate Action Summit in New York City on September 23, 2019. She traveled across the Atlantic on a zero-emissions yacht accompanied by her father and crew. Her impassioned speech rallied the world to action. Here is Greta Thunberg's speech as read by Project Shakespeare student Helen Martinuska. My message is that we'll be watching you. This is all wrong. I shouldn't be up here. I should be back in school on the other side of the ocean. Yet you all come to us young people for hope. How dare you? You have stolen my dreams and my childhood with your empty words. And yet I'm one of the lucky ones. People are suffering. People are dying. Entire ecosystems are collapsing. We're in the beginning of a mass extinction, and all you can talk about is money and fairy tales of economic growth. How dare you? For more than 30 years, the science has been crystal clear. How dare you continue to look away and come here saying that you're doing enough? when the politics and solutions needed are still nowhere in sight. You say you hear us and that you understand the urgency. But no matter how sad and angry I am, I do not want to believe that. Because if you really understood the situation and still kept on failing to act, then you would be evil. And that I refuse to believe. The popular idea of cutting our emissions in half in 10 years only gives us a 50% chance of staying below 1.5 degrees and the risk of setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. 50% may be acceptable to you, but those numbers do not include tipping points, most feedback loops, additional warming hidden by toxic air pollution, or the aspects of equity and climate justice. They also rely on my generation sucking hundreds of billions of tons of your CO2 out of the air with technologies that barely exist. So a 50% risk is simply not acceptable to us. We who have to live with the consequences. To have a 67% chance of staying below a 1.5 degrees global temperature rise, the best odds given by the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the world had 420 gigatons of CO2 left to emit back on January 1st, 2018. Today, that figure is already down to less than 350 gigatons. How dare you pretend that this can all be solved with just 
business as usual, and some technical solutions. With today's emissions levels, that remaining CO2 budget will be entirely gone within less than eight and a half years. There will not be any solutions or plans presented in line with these figures here today, because these numbers are too uncomfortable, and you are still not mature enough to tell it like it is. You are failing us, but the young people are starting to understand your betrayal. The eyes of all future generations are upon you, and if you choose to fail us, I say, we will never forgive you. We will not let you get away with this. Right here, right now, is where we draw the line. The world is waking up, and change is coming, whether you like it or not. Thank you. Go listen, Lord, if you want to know. 